Hello, and welcome once again to NavHacks, the show that teaches you how to finally finagle the EDU7 interface to make editing more efficient, so you'll have time for other stuff, like contemplating the mysteries of the universe. As mentioned in the previous episode, today, my little grasshoppers, you shall learn the way of the dragon. That is to say, dragging stuff around the interface using your mouse. Only this time, we'll be doing it NavHack style. For starters, you can effectively use any Explorer window as a bin window, thus creating a whole bunch of ways of getting media into EDIUS. You can drag clips from any Explorer window into your bin. Or you can drag clips from any Explorer window straight to your player window, preview a clip and mark in and out points before dragging it to your timeline. Or, you can drag clips from any Explorer window to your Recorder window, which then drops the clip onto your timeline depending on the selected edit mode and active patch assignment. Or, you can drag clips from any Explorer window straight to your timeline. Note that when dragging clips to the play and record windows or the timeline, the clip does not register in your bin. If you would like these clips registered to your bin, you can drag them from the timeline to your bin. Also note that in EDIUS, the undo and redo functions only affect operations performed on the timeline, and not the changes that you've made in your bin. Using Explorer windows as bins can be pretty useful. For example, you might have a folder with hundreds of pictures, but you know you'll only need one or two specific pics. It's much faster to drag these clips to your timeline than to go through the whole rigmarole of importing them into your project. If you like, you can keep a whole bunch of windows open and at the ready, in case you need to quickly grab a file that you need for your edit. Now, once you've got your clips on the timeline, there's a whole bunch of neat tricks that you can do with your mouse. For starters, you can drag and drop transitions from one edit point to another. You can also determine the placement of the transition by dragging the mouse. Once you're happy with the placement, release the left mouse button. And there you go. Repeat as needed. You can also apply the same transition across a group of selected clips. I'll start by clicking on the transition. It will appear on the information window. I will now drag select a group of clips that I want to apply this transition to. Next, I will click on the transition in the information palette and drag it to my selected range of clips. Again, I can set the placement of the transition before releasing the left mouse button and BAMO! You can also do this by dragging from the effects palette to the selected range of clips on the timeline. If you apply a transition on the keyer track, you can select that transition and make it appear in the information palette. Now you can drag this transition to the tail end of the clip to bookend it with the same transition. Now you can drag these transitions from one keyer track to another, replicating the effect across several clips. This is also applicable for use with other keyer effects, like blending modes, chroma and luma keyers, track mats, and opacity nodes. You can also do the same thing with transitions on the title track. Layouter settings, effects, and filters can also be dragged and dropped from one clip to another. If you want to apply the same effects to a group of clips, click on your source clip, which has all the effects that you want already set up, drag select a group of clips you want to apply the effects to, and then drag the effects from the information palette over to the selected clips, and voila! Let's apply these techniques all together to quickly edit a Ken Burns montage sequence. I'll grab a bunch of stills from this folder and drop it straight to my timeline. I'll use the Layouter tool to animate a simple slow zoom. Next, I'll drop in a monochrome effect to give it a sepia look. Add an old movie filter. And then I'll top it off with a strobe. I'll drag select the rest of the clips and then drop the effects from the reference clip and then I'll drag a transition. And there you go, a quick and easy Ken Burns type montage in a little over 30 seconds. 
And that, my little grasshoppers, is the power of the dragon, making the fastest editing software even faster. So smoking fast that I have time left over to demonstrate a few more useful nav hacks. Let's go over to our bin. If you were to right click on a folder in your tree view, you will notice that you can export the bin itself, either as an EZB or EDIUS bin file, or as an HTML document that you can view on your web browser. If you've got a bin with clips from different local drives on your machine that you know you could use in another project, you can export this bin as a separate file. Later on, when you're working on a different project, you can simply import this bin and save yourself the trouble of having to hunt down the individual clips on your machine. Next, let's take a look at markers. We're all familiar with using timeline markers for setting chapters, for use in Blu-ray or DVD authoring, but they can be used for so much more. Some of you might be familiar with Thal's Law, which states that for every vision, there is an equal and opposite revision. Like it or not, revisions are a part of the whole editing process. Markers can be used for taking note of revisions. Also, the list of sequence markers can be exported as a CSV file. This file can be sent to another editor working remotely but using the same timeline. What's more, a CSV file can be opened with any spreadsheet program retaining timecodes and comments. And it is this feature of the sequence marker palette that makes it particularly useful for one other thing. You can use it to transcribe interviews. You can make a timeline containing all of your interview footage, add markers as you go along, and use the marker comments to transcribe the interviews. Note that when the playhead is over a marker, the comments show up on the record window. You can also export the marker list and print it out if you want to make an old-school paper edit, preferably someplace far, far away from your dimly lit editing suite, a place that serves tasty beverages and has free Wi-Fi, which you can opt not to use as you contemplate the mysteries of the universe. Well, that's all the attention span I have for now. Tune in next time for another exciting episode of NavHacks. This has been your host, The Frank. Thank you for watching.